Hi, I'm Nadine Dwinnell, the Director of Animal Care here at the Brant County SPCA. And today we're going to be giving you a virtual tour of our shelter. Behind me is the cat adoption area. Um, so every cat has sort of a kitty condo. You'll notice there are two sides to each cage. One we like to call kind of their clean side and the other side their dirty side. Although being cats, sometimes they get them mixed up. So on our clean side, you'll see that they each have a box that they can get into and hide if they don't want to interact with people. Um, and these guys are very outgoing, so they don't spend a whole lot of time in there. But over the years, we've learned about how important stress is in a cat's life and how important it is to reduce the amount of stress they have to, in order to keep them happy and healthy in a shelter environment. So again, the box allows them to get away from people if they don't want to. You'll notice that the bed has at least three inches of bedding in it. This allows for the cats to get proper REM sleep and therefore making them healthier. The cages have a portal in them. So again, they have both two sides to each cage to give them more floor space. They're provided with different toys throughout the day and on different days of the week to help enrich their lives and to keep their minds busy. They're also given a, a scratching post that they can uh, destroy or play with. The idea behind it is to keep them moving because we know that your cardiovascular system works on its own. You don't need to tell it to do its job, but your immune system does, and that relies on movement. So again, the toys, the scratch posts, all of that is designed to get them moving and to help keep them happy and healthy. So this is our small pet section. Uh, when we get into our new building, they will have their own separate room. Uh, but this is the space that we've created them within the walls that we have currently. Um, right now, we have a number of rabbits uh, in each of the cages. Uh, there had been somebody um, letting them free around the city. So uh, between our officers and members of the public, we managed to get them all rounded up. Uh, they're being uh, checked over right now, um, giving nail trims, uh, health checks. Uh, they're going to be spay and neutered, and then hopefully out for adoption. Welcome to our cat intake area. When the cats arrive, if they seem relatively healthy, that is not contagious to any of the other cats, and they're friendly, they come into this area. While they're here, they'll get a health check, vaccine, deworm, deflea, whatever we need to provide for them. We'll evaluate them, see what special needs they might have, if they have uh, ongoing medical things that we need to address. Uh, in the meantime, they're in here, it's a little quieter, it's away from the public. The cage setup is the same as in adoption. Uh, the room is just configured a little differently. So again, they have their kitty condos with their, with their hide boxes and everything provided for them so that we can get to know them a little bit. And then if they are a stray that has come in after 72 hours and they have not been claimed by an owner, then we will get them ready for adoption. So this next section that we're about to enter, we call our garage. The garage was put up so that we could segregate some of our cat population that might have some sort of disease or might be too scared to be in the other parts of the building. This area is much quieter than the rest of the shelter uh, and allows us to get a better evaluation of them and decide where they need to go at the end of their whole time. So this is our feral cat room. So if a cat's come into the shelter and it has bitten or scratched and needs to serve quarantine, it will come into this room. Um, while well, the Department of Health checks on it to make sure that it's well. Um, also, if we get a feral in, it will come into this room. Uh, this is in a separate section of the shelter where it's much quieter. Um, we will hold them again. They usually tend to be stray, so they'll be held for their 72 hours. During that time, the staff will be working with them. If we can uh, get them to be more social and we think that they're adoptable, after their whole time, they will be processed for adoption. Um, if they are truly community cats and want to stay on the streets, then we will arrange for them to be spay, neutered, ear tipped, have all their vaccines and microchipped, um, and then they will be released back out to the area that they came from. If for some reason they can't go back into the community, we have our Barn Buddies program. So through the Barn Buddies, we will adopt to a business for a farm or a warehouse, um, a place that wants a working cat to catch mice and keep busy, um, but not necessarily needing the most social of cats. In this room, instead of having the cardboard box, we have what's called a feral den. So the feral den, as you can see, has plexiglass in the front so the staff can keep an eye on the cat. Um, they can come into the cage and close this portal um, while they're feeding and cleaning so that the animal is safe, so that the staff are safe. Um, and then when they're finished cleaning, they just open the portal back up again 
um, and the kitty can come and go as it pleases. Again, having the bedding and everything for it to sleep in. The beauty of these little things as well is when the cat has to go for surgery for spay neuter, um, again, the hole can just be closed up and the whole thing goes with the kitty so that we try to disturb them as little as possible. And then when the kitty's ready to be released, again, this whole unit will go with the officer while they release the cat and then it'll be brought back uh, and cleaned up for the next use. So this is our cat isolation room. Again, this is in part of this shelter that is much, much quieter. Um, and this is kind of a multi-purpose room. So during the spring, uh, it's mostly a nursery as mom and kittens arrive, they're placed out here so they can relax and, and stay quiet while we search for a foster home for them. We also offer, um, when there's space available, uh, a temporary boarding program for people that have to go into Nova Vida um, or some other crisis center so that they can get themselves someplace safe uh, they know that their cat is someplace safe and it allows them a couple of weeks to find a friend or family member that might be able to uh, be able to care for the animal for them going forward. These are a little bit different configuration of cages, but the same principles apply. We want them to have a hide box to come up and around um, and lots of room to be able to stretch it. So this is our cat observation room. So when a new cat arrives and we feel that it may have something that's contagious to other cats, it will go in here. Typically that is an upper respiratory infection or kitty cold as we like to call it. Um, so we keep them in here. Again, it's less stressful away from the other animals um, and it's cordoned off from the other cats so that we don't have to worry about transmission from this room to healthy cats. Our dog staff typically care for these cats. That way we don't have to worry about them leaving this room and infecting healthy cats. And the staff taking care of our healthy cats for the day stay out of this area. So this is our dog adoption room. We have two dog rooms in the current shelter. They're both just mirror images of each other. We have this room, the dog adoption room, and our dog intake room. So new arrivals would go in dog intake, and again, we would deliver vaccines, deworm, deflea, whatever we uh, need to update for the animal, uh, decide if the animal needs ongoing uh, medical care, um, and then after its whole time, if it's a stray or it's evaluated, if it's a surrender, uh, it'll, we'll make sure that it's spay neutered, and that it has rabies vaccine, a microchip, and then they'll be placed for adoption. The dog cages, uh, again, in the new shelter, uh, they will not uh, be set off aside from each other. Um, it's better if the dogs don't see their neighbors. That's why we had these panels installed on these doors so that if the dog uh, is feeling anxious and doesn't want to look at its neighbors, uh, it has a bit of a visual barrier for it. Um, again, as I said, the, uh, in the new building, they will not be uh, facing off against each other. Each dog um, has a caranda bed, and then they're given either blankets in the colder weather or sheets to help keep them nice and comfy. So this is the outdoor area that we've created for our adoption dogs. So on a nice day like today, they'll be out here pretty much all day. They get toys for enrichment. If it's quite warm, we have sprinklers or we have pools for them uh, so that they can uh, get some relief from the heat. Uh, but otherwise, they're out here pretty much all day enjoying the nice weather. Um, and then when someone books an appointment to come in and meet them for adoption, um, we can uh, meet them out here and get them out to our enrichment pen uh, for a better meeting with their potential family. Thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual tour of the Brant County SPCA, also known as the Little Shelter That Could, and hopefully one day soon we'll be able to invite you within our shelter for a personal tour.